also another one of these places where Shakespeare is this amazing thinker about the nature of, of man. Um, anthropology, or a question of, of the very nature of the human person, comes in his play King Lear. Uh, this play about a king who, in the very first scene, is attempts to divide up his kingdom amongst his three daughters, um, and two of them flatter him, and so he gives them uh, what they desire. And the third one, the one that's closest to his heart, Cordelia, her name means heart, um, refuses to flatter him, um, and so he banishes her um, and sends her away. Um, it's not very long into the play before it turns out that the other two daughters do not love him and treat him badly, um, and he flees from them out into a storm. And this amazing act three, where Lear uh, is out, uh, exposed to the elements in the midst of this enormous storm. Um, but what I want to talk about is the, the other person who comes along with him. He has a fool along with him, he has his loyal servant, um, but this uh, figure shows up, poor Tom. Now, poor Tom uh, appears to be uh, um, an escapee from Bedlam, from the insane hospital that, by the way, was very close to the globe. Um, Shakespeare could have heard the cries of the mental patients, you know, being treated, frankly, in terrible conditions. Uh, while he was at the Globe. And so he's created this figure of poor Tom who um, is babbling incoherently out among them in the storm. Now, the fascinating thing about poor Tom is he's not actually an escapee. He is Edgar, uh, a son who has been banished from his father's presence as well for thinking that there were some nefarious doings going on. So Edgar has disguised himself as poor Tom to escape suspicion and has stumbled across Lear out in the storm, but he's still pretending to be poor Tom, babbling strangely and wondering, and he's half naked, he's cold, he's, he seems to be terrified, and Lear looks upon him um, in the midst of, of Lear also sort of beginning to lose his mind in some ways under the stress and the strain of being out in the storm. But he looks upon poor Tom, and at this crucial moment in the middle of Act 3, Scene 4, um, looks upon him and says, is man no more than this? Right? He looks upon this, this babbling, insane, half-naked uh, person struggling even sort of to put together a coherent sentence, it seems. And he says, is, is this what humans are? Is, is this all we are? Right? And he says, consider him well. Thou owest the worm no silk, the beast no hide, the sheep no wool, the cat no perfume, right? You don't owe anyone anything. You've been stripped down to the basics. Um, you don't have any responsibilities. You don't have, you don't have anyone that you owe anything to. You don't have anyone, right? Life has stripped you down to the bare minimum. And he says, is, is this, when, when you strip us all down, is this what we are? And he makes a joke, he says, ah, you know, here's three on us that are sophisticated. Right? We're the ones who sort of finally learned the truth of things. Thou art the thing itself, he says. Unaccommodated man is no more but such a poor, bare, forked animal as thou art. It's this astonishing moment, right, where Lear um, himself, right, being stripped of his kingship, being stripped of all of his uh, retainers, his court flunkies, all of the people around him, looks upon this other man and says, you know, when you, when you take it all away, is this really what we are? And, and there's, a, there's a wisdom to that that I think that Lear has to come to, that uh, at, our, at our deepest, we need to find some way to undeceive ourselves, that, that uh, the BMW and the nice house uh, and the 2.3 kids um, and uh, the job title of uh, chair professor of English, and all those things really are not what make us human. Um, and for a long time, I really read the play in that way, that, that Lear does come to that wisdom. But I also have changed my sense of the reading of the play, that, in fact, that's not the ultimate wisdom, that Lear still does have some things to learn from that point. Um, there's this sense that I think he's not fully right, about that, and Shakespeare wants to see this, because it's still Act 3, Scene 4. We still have a good bit of the play to go. We still have more things for Lear to learn and discover, 
uh, before the end of the play and to gain wisdom about before the end of the play. And so I began to think that, in fact, that there is a kind of halfway wisdom that Lear has come to, that, that the example of the human that Shakespeare set before us in Poor Tom and in Lear's understanding about the Poor Tom, about Poor Tom, is that we need to strip away those things that are inessential, but that there's a way we can go too far in that stripping away as well. Because, in fact, of course, he's wrong about poor Tom. Poor Tom isn't poor Tom. Poor Tom is Edgar, the son of his good friend and servant Gloucester, the Earl of Gloucester. I think that there's these times when we are tempted to think that the way to find our humanity is to strip everything away. Look, I grew up in the 70s. There were lots of people in my life um, who wanted to find themselves in the 60s and the 70s, right? And, and the way they seem to want to find themselves is to go out into the woods, you know, like Thoreau, and strip everything away and get back to nature and get to the thing itself, right? But I've, I've come to think that that stripping away can uh, actually strip away some of the essential things that, does, that do make us human. Um, when, when you do that stripping away, right, what, what gets stripped away from you? Well, in the 60s and 70s, the first thing that got stripped away from you was your religion. That's the first thing you wanted to throw off, that's somehow being false. Then you stripped off uh, all of your friends and relationships. I have to go out by myself. The next thing to strip off was family uh, the, and, and some of those closest relationships. And I think that what Shakespeare is trying to get to us in Lear, thinking that Tom is the thing itself, um, is to say that, no, that's not fully what makes us human, right? We're, in fact, we're all born into relation, uh, as, as my colleague and mentor, John Alvis, says. Uh, the minute we're born, we are someone's son, we are someone's daughter, uh, we are the grandson of someone else. Um, we are born into relation. And Lear um, has to strip away some of the falsities about himself, but what he has forgotten at this point in thinking that he can be out in the storm by himself and somehow therefore be the truest self is that he still has a daughter who loves him. He still has a kingdom, in a sense, that needs him. He still has a whole set of relationships that are a part of who he needs to be. And when he returns back out of the storm and does reestablish that relationship with Cordelia, and, uh, and establish who he is. The f right? One of the first things she says to him when he wakes up after being in the storm is uh, he, she says, you're in your own kingdom, sir. And this touching moment where she says, you're still the king. It is still, this still is your kingdom. And so there's this way I think that we can often be tempted in our explorations of the human. Um, for, for it's in some good reasons, I think, to think that we need to strip everything away. Um, but in fact, again, that's not true. Um, from the moment we are conceived, we are a son or a daughter. From the moment we are born, we are born into a family and a set of relationships. Those are what make us human as well. And not to acknowledge those is not to fully acknowledge our humanity and not to fully embrace uh, what I think Lear doesn't want to embrace, the problems, the difficulties, um, the, the demands on one that make one human. At the beginning of the play, the reason he wanted to give up and divide up his kingdom is that he could basically just retire and go, as he says, crawl unburthened towards the grave. I think he wanted to check out, and he wanted to check out of those relationships and those problems and those demands upon him that made him a king. And that's part of what sets the tragedy in motion. So to go off um, into the woods is probably a good thing every now and then. Um, but to think that the point of that is, to, is that we'll find ourselves by stripping away everything that makes us ourselves is, I think, fundamentally a mistake. Mm -hmm.